In this video, I want to give you an introduction to solving systems of nonlinear equations. So a system that's considered nonlinear is just going to have at least one equation that's going to be, you know, not a line when you graph it. So there's lots of options. We can have quadratics, uh, which creates a parabola when you graph it. We've got cubics and circles and rational. Uh, expressions and functions and so lots of shapes lots of different relationships possible here the biggest one though is you can always have no solution but you'll see as we work some of these examples you can also have one two three four or more possible solutions based on the relationship of these equations when they're graphed so let's go ahead and look at this first example. So we have y equals x cubed plus 3x squared plus 2x, and this is going to be a cubic function. And then we have y equals 6x plus 12, and this is going to be a linear function. So this cubic function could look something like this, and we could have a line that crosses. So you could have upwards of three solutions, and those are just all these points of intersections. So there could be 0, 1, 2, or 3 solutions in this case. So let's go ahead and solve it and see what happens. It looks like substitution is going to be our best bet. We have this 6x plus 12 expression that's equivalent to y. So let's go ahead and substitute it in for y, and then we'll solve the, uh, the equation that comes out here. So 6x plus 12, and that's going to equal this x cubed plus 3x squared plus 2x. Okay, since we know it's a higher power polynomial, we're going to set it equal to 0 and solve. So let's go ahead and subtract 6x and subtract 12 from both sides. So we have this 0 now over here on the right side. And we'll have x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4x minus 12. Well, the nice thing that it looks like we can do here is do a little factor by grouping. So we're going to divide this into the first pair and the second pair. And let's go ahead and find the greatest common factor here. It looks like x squared. And when I pull that x squared out, I'll have x plus 3. Similarly, I'm going to pull the greatest common factor out, which is negative 4. And my leftovers will be once again x plus 3. So since we have the same leftovers, I can go ahead and factor that out. So x plus 3, and then we have x squared minus 4, and that equals 0. And of course, that's a difference of squares. So I can factor this even more. And again, this is very common when you have systems of nonlinear equations, that we're going to have uh, lots of factorizations here and lots of possible solutions. So I know that when I take x plus 3 and x plus 2 and x minus 2 and I multiply them together, I get 0. So I need to take into account that any of these factors could be 0. So x plus 3 equals 0, x plus 2 equals 0, x minus 2 equals 0. So here we have a negative 3, here we have negative 2, and here we have positive 2. So lots of values for x here. We have three of them. So if we go back up here to the top, we had y equals 6x plus 12. So let's go ahead and plug all of our values of x back into this 6x plus 12 expression so we can get all the accompanying values of y. All right, so down here we'll do x equals negative 3, and then x equals negative 2, and x equals positive 2. And we'll kind of work all three of these independently. So let's put negative 3 in first. So y equals 6 times negative 3 plus 12. That'll give us negative 18 plus 12, which will give us a y value of negative 6. So this ordered pair solution will be negative 3, negative 6. And there's the first one. The second one is when I plug negative 2 in for x. So let's go ahead and do that. 6 times negative 2 plus 12. So y equals negative 12 plus 12, y equals 0. All right, so this ordered pair solution will be negative 2, 0. And the final one, y equals 6 times 2 plus 12. So y equals 12 plus 12, y equals 24. So in this one, we have 2 
24 for the final solution. So all three of these ordered pairs will ultimately be solutions to this initial system of nonlinear equations. And I would challenge you to go ahead, maybe go on Desmos or graph this somehow and just see the relationship that exists right here. But we did get three solutions. In this second example, we have y squared minus x equals 4 and y plus 7 equals 2x. So substitution looks great. We could actually either solve for y in this second equation and plug it into the first, or we could solve for x in the first and plug it into the second. There really is no reason to do one more than the other, so maybe let's go ahead and solve for y in the second equation, and we'll end up with 2x minus 7. So once we know that that y actually equals the expression 2x minus 7, we can go ahead and substitute it in for the y, but in the other equation. So we'll end up with 2x minus 7 squared minus x equals 4. So when I square this, I'll end up with 4x squared minus 28x plus 49, and then minus x equals 4. So this is quadratic in nature, so it looks like I just need to set it equal to 0 and factor, if possible. So 4x squared minus 29x plus 45 equals 0. So looks like uh, I, there's not a greatest common factor I can pull out of everything, so I'm going to do the AC method. So factors of 4 times 45 is 180. So factors of 180 and this will be a positive 180, that add to negative 29. That means it'll be negative and negative, so both of these factors will be negative. So it looks like we could have something like 9 times 20, and 9 times 20 is 180, and negative 9 minus 20 is negative 29. So negative 4x squared minus 9x minus 20x plus 45 equals 0. Let's do our factor by grouping, so an x can come out, and I'll say 4x minus 9, and then right here it looks like a negative 5 can come out, so 4x minus 9. When I factor, it's x minus 5, and 4x minus 9. So my values of x look like positive 5 and positive 9 over 4. Okay, you could also say maybe 2.25 if you like to work with decimals. But we have two values of x here. So we know we can go ahead and plug it back into this expression to find out what the accompanying values of y will be. So y equals 2x minus 7. So 2x minus 7. And I'll put the value of x equals 5 on this side and maybe x equals 9 fourths on this side and we'll plug them in and we'll just solve for our values of y. So 2x minus 7 is 10 minus 7 is 3 so that ordered pair looks like 5 3 for that first solution. Alright how about 9 fourths? Well it's 2 times x so 2 over 1 times 9 over 4 minus 7. Of course, we can do a little simplifying before we multiply. So y equals 9 halves minus 7, which when I get common denominators, ends up being minus 14 halves. So it looks like y equals negative 5 halves. And my ordered pair solution will be 9 fourths negative 5 halves. And there are the two solutions for this initial system of nonlinear equations.